the second I start recording, my neighbor is like, I think I'm gonna start playing some 80s rock right now. It's a good song. I'll give them that, it's a good song. Hello, my cute and creepy friends. If you are a Halloween shopper, antique collector, then you know the prices of items are kind of the huge reason that you don't have a Halloween hoarder house at this point. So I guess maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> But honestly, there are so many items where it's not about not being able to find them. It's about that price. And I cannot stress enough the item that has been just put in the grave for me. Like I have made peace with the fact that I will probably never own one of these. And it's not because I never see them. I see them actually at least one of them every time I've gone to an antique fair or a big thrift store. And if you know, you know, it's the German die cut Halloween paper cutouts, the, the amount of words in the, the name of these things, but the German die cuts, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. The amount of details in these things, it, yeah. So I understand, you understand why people love them, why they're so sought after, but the price. I can't. And yes, I may go home down and out, but I don't stay down for too long because the first thing I think is, how do I make this? So today's craft, we are going to be attempting to make our own German die cut. Now, I couldn't find online the exact process of how they made these in the early 1900s, they're very old. Most likely, this was created from pressing an image into paper, or vice versa, pressing a paper into a carving of something because these were not, at least the early ones, they weren't done by machines. These were done by hand in people's homes. They weren't done in like factories. So we're gonna be figuring this out. We may get a few things wrong, but I kinda can't because I only have one linoleum block. So let's get it right. Let's get it right the first time. <laughs> and instead of just doing a classic vintage illustration, I'm going to modernize this by doing a Beetlejuice German die cut because it's a topical movie. Yes, I'm a couple weeks late, but I don't wanna hear it. And whilst we're carving and pressing the paper, I'm gonna chat with you about my thoughts about the movie. I saw it a couple of days ago and I have some thoughts. Let's get our linoleum blocks, our carving tools, and make this happen. For our German die cut, I wanted to go with a similar style of this guy. So I made a sandworm like the shape of the moon and then put Beetlejuice in the center of it. To get as many details as possible, I'm going to carve out this area and then leave the lines intact. So. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tricky. <laughs> Alrighty, so what I have here is a printout of my art that we're going to be transferring to the linoleum block here. Well, it's not really a block, it's more like a squishy slab. And then over here we have our carving tool with several other little tips that it comes with. So depending on what area of the drawing we're in, we'll be able to switch out the tips. This is a burnishing set. This is gonna come in handy for the next part when we have our template all carved out and I'm going to be pressing that paper into the template. And each of these tips have like a small rounded ball on there so that it doesn't puncture the paper and you can kind of groove the paper in these like little crevices. And lastly, our charcoal and our tracing paper. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is cover a piece of the tracing paper with charcoal because that's how we're going to get this image onto the linoleum. If I could only figure out how to open this. It reminds me of the art I used to make in my youth. When I was a young boy. Next, we take this charcoal smothered sheet and we're gonna place it facing down on the linoleum. And we're going to simply trace these lines and that should transfer onto that board and then we're able to cut. One of my biggest pet peeves in the world is when these don't come apart and when stickers don't peel. Those two things. It's a little messy. Can you erase charcoal with a regular eraser? I don't remember in art class. Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go over this with my eraser and just kind of clean up some of the lines. And then honestly, I could even go over it again with a pencil. It has to be a pencil, obviously, because we don't want to put any permanent lines on this thing, we just wanna have a nice clear view of what we need to carve out. So this is looking pretty good. I think I'll clean up all the crap around the border so that we don't have any sleeves getting in the way. Okay, you guys, we need to pause the craft for a second because I just got a package that I need to know what you think. So it's a hat. It's a hat from Cakeworthy, which I have ordered from them before. They have a lot of really fun um, Disney Halloween Christmas stuff. And I ordered this beanie and I still like it. I'm just, I didn't know that it was basically a baseball cap, but with Sherpa over it. So this is the hat. Very cute. <coughs> it has like an adjustable thing in the back. Didn't know about that. Most likely not because they didn't sh show it, but because I just didn't look thoroughly enough. But anyway, um, so, Don't make fun of me. You know, I'm always looking for cute things to wear to like pumpkin patches, or just like little fall activities. But I just like, it's hard. It's like a firm, does it look dumb? <sighs> it looks dumb, doesn't it? Whatever, I don't care. I still like it. <sighs> I'm gonna start on the outer corners just to, I feel like it's the easiest. So let's, let's start there. Oh, okay. I 
think what I'm gonna do is just carve the lines as best as I can, kind of like sketching, ah, and then go in with a bigger one and clear it out. But yeah, so Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I saw it with my husband last week. Overall, I do want to say that I do think it was cute. So it was nothing about like me not having a good time or like, you know, I didn't leave upset, nothing like that. My expectations are always so low when it comes to remakes. It's just, yeah. I went in thinking that it was going to be all about this bride, this ex-wife of Beetlejuice's. And so I was like, okay, interesting. That'll be fun. Come to find out, this is a little bit spoilery. I don't wanna get too, spo I mean, the movie's been out for a little bit, so I'm not gonna give away anything if you haven't. I just wanna say that it was underwhelming. <laughs> it was underwhelming with the ex-wife by what they did with that and how little it affected. I thought she looked cool and I was let down with that. My other thoughts were that, which my husband agreed with me, was that I thought there were way too many plot points. I thought there were way too many plot points going on in the movie. They needed to just pick one, maybe two. You know, maybe if the characters are divided, they can have like two or whatever. But there were so many things happening. And then they wrapped all of the those plot points up, like really quick. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess, I guess that's resolved now. <laughs> so that was one of the things that I was like, okay, like there was a plot point that I ripped that I actually enjoyed and thought it was pretty fun and it involved Astrid. And holy crap, they just wrapped that up <laughs> so quickly. And it just took me off guard. Every other part, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I had fun. It was very nostalgic and just very, very fun for the Halloween season. And that's all we can ask for, right? That's all we can ask for as Halloween lovers is to have something to look forward to for the Halloween season. So we're always, we're always just so thirsty for Halloween. <laughs> so we'll take whatever we can get. There was another thing that I was like, oh my God, that would have been so cool. And this was on TikTok. My husband showed it to me and it were it was um, a podcast talking about the movie and they were like, they should have started the movie with Beetlejuice sitting in that waiting room with his number finally being called and like then all of a sudden, you know, he's summoned or like whatever, like he's just about to get in and then the, or the receptionist goes on her break or whatever and then he's summoned by them. and. <laughs> I was like that, and I just thought, wow, that would have been amazing. That would have been such a good intro, so creative, such a fun nod to the first movie, but we didn't get that. We didn't get that, which is fine, but I just, I love it when fans come up with like such better things than like, people in Hollywood, like the fan fiction and fan ideas for movies that I love. I'm just like, oh my God, that would have been incredible. That's such a good idea. I'm assuming there's gonna be a third cause it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So it's safe to assume there's gonna be a third one, but we'll see. The last and final thing I will say that really upset me and it had nothing to do with the actual the actual movie. Once again, just like the last movie I saw and the one before that and the one before that, <laughs> there were people talking the entire time. 
I do not understand, like, why are you here? Why are you going to a movie that you paid God knows how much for? You know, you paid 20 bucks and then they also got food because this was a nice theater so you can order food. And they ordered food, they had like a meal and they were talking. They talked the whole time and not quietly either. Not quietly, not like, which that would still annoy me. Whispering is so annoying, but like they were talking normally. And I just, we finally, we moved and we had perfect seats, the center in the back. And we had to move because these freaking buttheads had to be like, let's go to the movies and have a conversation instead of just sitting in our living room and talking. It just really pisses me off. And that's why I don't, I kind of dread going to the movies nowadays, which is sad because that is, an activity that I love to do. I loved going to the movie theater. I don't know, maybe going opening night would be better. Maybe it's gonna, maybe it, you have a higher chance of seeing a movie with a crowd of people that actually want to watch it rather than people that don't give a crap, which clearly these people did not give a crap about the movie. And we did also go get employees. We, we my husband went and was like, hi, there are people talking and they didn't do anything. They didn't, they were like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come in and like talk to them. They didn't. And you know that I am not about to be like shut up in the theater and have some kind of confrontation with like teenagers. No, I am so anti-confrontation. I would rather just move and sigh about it a couple of times in a row. Then, then deal with people. So anyway, that was the last annoying thing that happened that I was really uh, bummed about. But whatever, we got our popcorn, we got our pumpkin milkshake, pumpkin pie milkshake actually. Oh my God, it was so good. And yeah, it was great. I had fun, disappointing in all the plots, thought it could have been better, but it was fun. And would I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. All right, I'm going to shut up so that I can really hone in on this. <laughs> By the way, I ended up with a small battle scar. So just warning you, if you use one of these, be careful because they are vicious. Did you want to come in? Mm -hmm. Colin just trimmed his beard. 
Whoa! It used to be like. Whoa, and then I was. Whoa. Yeah. This is a coffee mug. There's just water in there. There's just water. It's fake. It's all water. a facade. Gotcha! Mm, mm, mm. It has been a few days and the stencil is finally done. Yeah! Only three band-aids were were used. So I would say that that's, that's pretty good. I am a little bit concerned of how not clean the lines are. I'm a little worried that that's going to transfer to the paper, that it's going to be a very bumpy rather than that clean, precise line. But maybe, you know, Maybe it'll still look fine. Maybe it'll look cool. I got to thinking that if the die cut doesn't work out, doesn't look right, whatever, this is a stamp. This is literally a stamp that I could just go get some ink, put that all over this and you're good to go. So if it doesn't work out, it would be pretty cool to just throw some ink on here and make a print out of that. Either way, we're going to have a print. It's just me wanting the initial intention to be what I create. But you know what? Crafts don't always turn out that way. I'm gonna get the paper, I'm gonna cut it out into little sections, and we're gonna press some paper in to crevices. Hopefully. The first thing we're gonna do is mist the paper with some water. I think that just kind of makes it less stiff and more pliable. That should be good. I did a test earlier and you can't see. You clearly cannot see anything that is going on. So you just have to lift it up. Lift it up and look like you're an animator, I guess. <laughs> and just see what you're looking at below and just try to keep it consistent. I bet if I painted over this with like a really bright paint, maybe I'd be able to see through, but I don't even, I don't even know if, if that would actually help me. All right, I'm gonna start with this fin and we wanna just go super, super slow. Oh my God, I'm so nervous, you guys. Definitely little bumpies. It is not perfect like I was discussing with you guys, but like that's just the way it is. One eternity later. After it felt like it had been an eternity of drawing around a piece of paper blindly, I was done. All the details were there and it was time to cut out all of those empty spaces. Once that was all done, it was time to color it. And you guys will see that final outcome in the reveal. As simple 
as this project looks, it was pretty up and down for me. I was frustrated that I couldn't find hardly any information on how these were made in the past. And so I had to just guess what I thought after watching various YouTube videos on the best method for making what I wanted to make and just hope that I didn't waste my time, your time, or a bunch of money. And of course, I went into this craft very realistic. I don't have fancy tools. I don't have any machinery, but I still had a lot of fun and it was cool that it kind of worked. Is it super, super detailed? Like little strands of hair that these German die cuts have? Of course not. But I think for a first time thing, I think it turned out really well. And funny enough, I ended up going with this side rather than the intended side that I thought I was gonna go with. I just, I think that this side turned out better. It just has more details. The other side was way puffier. It didn't have as thin of lines as the front part did. And that's my biggest learning experience, I think, is leaving some of the parts of this solid chunks. I went with everything being cut out because I thought that that would give me the most detail. But the lip area, the lips of the sandworm, I should have totally left those solid. I should have left like the stripes on Beetlejuice's suit solid and not had just these little lines. So yeah, it's a learning curve. It's figuring out how embossing and debossing works. And I had fun with it. You know how I mentioned that this is also a stamp? So I was like, I gotta, I gotta try that. I gotta go with painting this whole thing in black. I wanted to just do one color because I started to do it in chunks and it dried so quickly. It, it was drying so fast that I, I was like, okay, never mind. Let's just do it all in black so I can do one quick swipe and then press. And um Yeah. So I was like, okay, we're going to lay that that on thicker. We're going to lay the paint on thicker and then instead of pressing the stamp onto the page. So I first had the paper laying down and I put the stamp on and really like did it like that. But this time I had the stamp laying down on the table and I put the paper on. I took my hands and I pressed around the whole stamp and I felt all the crevices. And uh, this is the better version <laughs> that we got. So not looking great as a stamp. Um, I, I don't know, I think I could maybe go back to the carving board and just kind of tweak the linoleum cutout maybe. Maybe I should try it with ink instead of acrylic paint. I looked that up and it said acrylic paint is totally fine. But uh, yeah, so not, not great. And I'm telling you, I lathered on this paint. I was like, this is the aftermath of that. It was a fun project. <laughs> it actually, it actually really was. It was something I, I've always wanted to try. I think it turned out really, really cute. There's cat hair on it now. <sighs> I'm going to either frame this or just put it directly on the wall. I think a lot of people just put die cuts directly on the wall. Let me know what you think about that, If what I should do. If I should frame this in like a cute little gothic -y frame or if I should just pop this on the wall as is. I would like to possibly sell these. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in buying one of these. Like, and I, and I would want to make an even better 
uh, stamp for this. Do all those details right. But yeah, let me know in the comments if if this is something, and then if, if none of you say anything, then I'll take that as a hint that you hate it and I'll throw it in the garbage. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this Halloween season. It is going by so fast. I wanted to get several videos out by now, but it's fine. Life just, life just sometimes has other plans for you. So stay tuned for more. I'm definitely gonna be putting out more videos this month. I'm going to try to put out as many as I can. Thank you so much for your patience and for sticking around. Let me know in the comments as well if you enjoyed the Beetlejuice movie, your thoughts on it. I would love to hear what you thought and let me know how wrong I am if you absolutely loved it. Like I said before, honestly, I'm just, just always happy when there's a spooky movie. If you love cute and creepy crafts and just love Halloween in general, then please hit that subscribe button. I post videos as much as I possibly can. <laughs> one day I'll get on a schedule. You guys, you guys know. It'll, it'll happen one day. I love you all, my cute and creepy friends, and I will see you in my next video.